My father was an immigrant that arrived in the 20s, one of the first Greeks out here, very famous man after 70 years of hard work. Uh, brought me up kind, he was a known figure in the Greek community, more like a love godfather. My father called me Zorro, but I might be Ali Barber and the 40 reform junkies the way we're going because I'm pretty good at getting kids off drugs and finding a life for them and giving them direction. I'm the sort of guy they can walk up to and say, I can tell you a secret I can't tell anyone. And I listen and I help and I take it in and I make action. I give them immediately what they need. Right then and then, there is no no out of me at all, yes. Because they've been everywhere in cop now. Some people uh, target Tony because he speaks the truth. Um, he's not afraid to, to speak his mind if there's uh, injustice or a bit of corruption uh, going on. He'll say that and a lot of people, if they are guilty or have guilty consciences, um, would try to stop him. So what we've got to do is any of your friends get upset, Make them laugh. We turn them into com comedians rather than criminals. We don't need lawyers. No, they don't like me. No one likes me. No. I'm the thorn in the system. You know? <laughs> but that's what it's about, you know? And uh, it's a love job, as I say. And if I can get Goat Island happening with my fairy, Eco Love Streamer TV show to the world with the voice from Young Australia showing inventions, solutions, and more protests. See, if you're not lazy, you're always fit. Yeah. If you're fit, you catch the biggest waves. Yeah. And all these people that sit around and eat, they go like I've known him since I was nine years old, yeah. And I met him at the police boys, playing basketball. I used to hang around him all the time, like, after school and go and, like, hang out with him and that, and it kept me out of trouble. Played with all my mates, um, most of them in and out of jail, and played good impact on, on my life, sort of thing. I started to becoming a, a full fledged youth worker in 1990. I abandoned the business world and working for the tax department and the government. I started working full time for street kids. I found that more rewarding and I could use all my skills and all my energies and all the money that my father left me in big business over the 50 years I worked for him. I'm 54 years of age. So for the 30, 40 years I worked for my dad, I spent everything on supporting the kids, the underground kids that were being abused, the disadvantaged kids. Here I am here with my brand new Rolls Royce, Silo for the Shadow 2, 1977, in the Cyprus Rally. It was one month old. I got frustrated at watching some of the go race the Ferraris. And uh, he took 20 people to the Wentworth Sheraton for the ball. Got a bit of mud on it. This in one rally, here is my uh, racing well career one, in America. Something. When I went and raced NASCAR in America, I was the first international driver ever to race the good old boys and the Yankees in, in their super speedways at this sport called Winston Cup. It's like the America's Cup of Ian Murray yacht racing, but it's the America's Cup of motor racing called the Winston Cup. And in this picture here at Talladega, Alamada, I got into the car with no sleep, been going So while I was working there and I was brought up in an affluent society, the Double Bay, Vaucluse area, I, I, I drove every day as well to Alexandria, Redford. And I'd be driving from the boat shed to Alexandria, from Vaucluse to Alexandria. And as I got closer to Alexandria, I seen all these kids sitting on the side of the road crying. And I live in the best address on earth. I can't close my eyes to kids crying on the street and wondering what's wrong with them. My father was here in the 20s, immigrated in the 20s. The well-respected uh, meat exporter, businessman, godfather of the Greek community, brought me up kind, not scared of anyone, very kind and respectful, so I started respecting the local kids in the area and supporting their cause. I was a real VW, yeah. Just to pick up a few boys, like a couple of young fellas, and whoever, even if you didn't know you, like, you would just say jump in, you know? Jump in, we'll go and have something to eat and take you to, like, the beach or take anywhere, you like, you know, wherever you want to go, just drive around, just, as long as you just keep, keep you off the streets and, like, keep you out of trouble, that's the, that's the main priority, like, you know, just make sure you, like, have a good path, so try to show you a good path, but there's better things in life than hanging around the streets. And so I'd given up using all my skills in the business world, in the meat export business, and I used all my skills now and I reverted all my interest in supporting street kids and disadvantaged youth. I thought you uh, couldn't be real. He's a man ready to spend his own money on, on Aboriginal kids. And he's doing it, pick them up, take them out to the beach all day Saturdays and Sundays, and afternoons after school, and he's still doing it today because I could see that their cause, after all they're Australians, are treated like, like, like 
being on enemy territory. The government seems to victimise young people, blame these aren't real men. They couldn't be real men, these politicians blaming children. And then he'd take them over to his own house and have barbecues and uh, he would take meat out of his own uh, factory and give away hundreds of dollars worth of meat a week to families to make sure that they were eating properly. I got myself a lot getting singlets and um, other things like um, like buying a full, like I go to a shop and just buy a ten chickens and things like that just to feed the whole side, feed the whole like the basketball side in it. And he'd done the same thing for the the ref and all blacks. Yeah, he just and made shirts for like the foot, football club. And always had food, they had training you know, for young kids and make sure they're fed first and like and then the adults come after sort of thing. Yeah. The more that they've de they've de demoralised me completely defamed me, character assassinated me, humiliated me. These people, adults, laugh at me when I entertain them. The kids love me for entertaining them because I, I bring dreams into their minds. When you bring young dream kids dreaming, I'm DA approved, dreams alive, that sort of blackens out the darkness in their lives. And the same for me. The darkness in my lives is blackened out by hanging around these young people making me laugh all day long. The goddess of love is going to reward me and I can back off and become a father and settle down to be a kindergarten teacher with my mama, come with my mother from the Bondi border as I turned up at the beach carnival. She can come and look after my kids until she goes and that would be a happy ending if that could happen. So I'm waiting for that happy ending. I always want to see a happy ending. But I have to make a movie about it. The Greek, father, Greek godfather kept down on. Tony should be nominated for Australian of the Year, you know. He's done, he's done so many good things, um, selfless things and things in the community over the years and projects and, and just for his energy, uh, you know, um, I think that title one day should go to Mr. Spanos. <laughs>